Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audiblepodcast.com slash Sorgatron Media. Over 75,000 titles to choose from for your iPod, iPhone, or MP3 player. I'm getting awesome! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first, there is no, well, not the very first, but the very first of this edition of the Awesome Cast. We'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, this is, as always, your host, Sorgatron, Mike Sorg, right here. And on the line is Rob. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? All right. All right. Some technical glitches as go with podcasting. Of course, Rob is not on the video this week for you that have actually received us that way whenever we decide to get that up. Uh, but, uh, we, we, we got, we got, we got some stuff going on. Um, just a little background before we get into it and get into our guest here for this evening. Uh, basically, uh, we had the idea to throw it together a tech podcast tech media whatever we can think of podcast and uh and uh me and rob here were talking and uh and you you had you had something uh up your sleeve here in the awesome cast sir uh yeah it was uh awesome cast was something i i had done uh three four years ago something like that and it uh kind of just fell apart because of uh, a lot of technical problems, a lot of uh, scheduling problems, and we didn't really have a, a good focus, so it got abandoned. But now it's back because it's a pretty sweet name. <laughs> so we got that going for us. And uh, yeah, this is this is something I've been wanting to do uh, just about since I moved to Pittsburgh uh, nearly two years ago. So I'm uh, glad it's coming together. And then, and then hey, there was me with the concept but no name. He had the name. And it all worked out, right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, for those that don't know, uh, you know, kind of introduce ourselves for the first episode. Again, I'm Mike Sorg. Uh, I do the Sorgatron Media Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, the Music Fun Time is in our podcast I started up. I've uh, been doing this podcast thing for about four years. We were trying to get something together with SorgatronMedia.com as kind of to push all of this and all the other projects that are going around in my hemisphere uh and get them all kind of on a network together and uh just kind of a uh you know in numbers you know we can we can push something to get something forward you know and break on through right right uh day day job i am a video specialist and technologist <laughs> is my recent title uh for uh multimedia training systems uh so i i do this in the day job too so you know uh just i'm not in front of the camera in that regard um and, or rob why don't you tell them a little about yourself uh i'm a uh i'm an everything kind of guy i my my day job is i am a prototype designer and builder for a local inventions company um so i do engineering industrial design stuff like that i write for macworld.com i'm a freelance photographer freelance graphic designer ran an it business for like five years and um, I do a lot of stuff, and I'm I'm really busy, and it's kind of amazing that I have time to do this. But I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. And of course, you heard a little bit in the background there. I want to introduce our guest. Uh, we're going to try to get a, as much of a revolving kind of guest kind of thing as we can. Uh, you know, we know a lot of people here in the social media scene in Pittsburgh and beyond, so we're hoping to kind of rope some of them into this project and uh, just have some good conversations, really. Uh, and of course, that voice is Mike Pound joining us on the Skype line. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you? All right. All right. Now that everything's working, of course. <laughs> right. So, uh, so tell the people, tell people what you do. Uh, I think for um, uh, for the purposes of today's episode, I'm the designated uh, grumpy old media guy. Um, <laughs> so you're... I'm, I'm I'm a newspaper reporter uh, for a, a, a smaller paper in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, we uh, we are sort of tentatively getting involved with new media stuff uh, after much prodding from the from the paper's owners, uh, and I've, I've been pretty heavily involved with that. Um, so I, we're hopefully going to be able to offer some perspective on on what we do sort of well so far, what we don't do so well, um, <laughs> and where what we can do. I, I I I wish I had a dime for every time I've I've been um, told that I work for a dying profession uh, because then I wouldn't have to worry about my profession dying anymore. But <laughs> that's fine. Ah. That's fine. Hey, you know what? Uh, you're one of the more progressive ones I know. 
in that area. So that's why we're on, so. that's why so. we're on the show. That's why we're on the show. We've had some great conversations over some beers at uh, at the German beer house. So I thought we'd bring some of them here. <laughs> <laughs> well, right off the bat, I want to get into. Uh, we're going to try to uh, cover uh, a handful of the the top stories of the week. I, you know, we don't want to be talking about all the stuff that everybody else is, you know, kind of uh, over overbearingly um because i know everybody gets sick of the facebook and the ipad talk and everything but oh, okay guess what we're covering the first episode here um <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing uh i have on the notes here guys is the facebook privacy concerns we can kind of talk a little bit more about it since it is our first time doing so uh of course last thursday uh, there was the um, last Thursday we got the day right I think I'm, I'm still pulling so. up yeah. the notes. Um, yeah. Was the uh, big press conference with Facebook and they redone the privacy notes. Now I'm coming from the I'm using Facebook. I don't expect Facebook to keep everything private. I'm not using it in a way that I'm worried about that. But I can understand how people are. I know, I know, I know. Mike, you have an opinion on that. I. <laughs> It, it, it's frustrating with the changes, and there, it, as far as uh, technical difficulties and, and, and problems figuring it out, um, I, I don't have too much trouble because I've been using Facebook for a while. But but it's it, it is it is far too complicated. Um, even with the changes from last week, it, it, it is still pretty tricky for someone who isn't you know immersed in this stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that coupled with uh, the contempt that that the Facebook folks seem to have for their customers. Um, I don't know if you want to get into to, to Mr. Zuckerberg's uh, alleged comments that, that came out a couple of weeks ago or not. Uh, go ahead. Um, go ahead a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I haven't I, seen this. Uh, I haven't seen a real strict, a real hard confirmation of this, but uh, he apparently had some not too kind words for uh, for Facebook users. Um, it, 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 over the years, he's he's been uh, he's made comments about, well, these people are just giving me this stuff. Um, meaning, you know, your private information, my private information, uh, the pictures, contact info, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I know Mike said at the outset that we're going to try to keep this a relatively clean podcast, so I can't, I can't refer directly <laughs> to the language. But we're going to try. I, we'll see. We'll see how long, <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts. I have no promises, but we're going to attempt to have a clean po- podcast for a, a change. Um, it's, 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 it, it's frustrating. I mean, he's uh, he has a license to print money. Um, with mm-hmm. with the uh, with the number of users that he has and the phenomenon that Facebook is, uh, and 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 it's disappointing that that he would view us and view our privacy um, the way that they apparently do. the The changes they made last week are are, are nice, and it, it does make this a little bit easier. Um, but boy, it, it, this this should be a very very simple thing for people to figure out, and 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 so far it's not. It's not even even with. Uh, the, the, the changes uh, they made last week. It's it's still a, a tough thing for someone who isn't dealing with this all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, one of my biggest gripes with the new changes is that the average user doesn't know that they made changes. Um, there's That's a great point. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's like, you get a little pop-up that comes up at the top of the screen that'll say, hey, we've updated our thing and whatever, and it'll ask you about it. But it didn't seem like they actually presented it to happen. I haven't seen that uh, that screen that's supposed to inform you that the uh, privacy options have changed yet. Yeah. And I use Facebook every single day, uh, which kind of bothers me. And a lot of people, I mean, uh, it's 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 a give and take as far as what Zuckerberg is doing and how he's treating people like fodder. I, I think his biggest problem is that Facebook was started with an idea of being very private, uh, and then we were introduced into this highly social world that not many people saw coming where people are willing to uh, give away a whole lot of information, like considering that everything on Twitter except for DMs is completely public. Uh, And I think Zuckerberg and Facebook as a corporation is looking at all this information, uh, seeing dollar signs and huge potential. And what they want to do is switch to this model of being public after being born out of privacy and it's just going completely wrong as they mishandle the process. The, uh, Rob, you make a great point about people not knowing uh, about the changes. And, and I actually, uh, I don't think I'd looked at Facebook at all over the weekend. Um, when I look today, I, th- there is no notice about the changes until you go to 
uh, the, the privacy settings section of, of, of your profile. I mean, it, it is, it, again, it is that hidden and you have to go through these layers uh, be, before you can find what should be a, 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 the, probably the most accessible part of, of your profile. Um, yeah, and it's also that it's a, um, I actually just went to Facebook.com just now and I saw the, there's a little blue box that comes up that says improve privacy controls figures. I, uh, but I think I actually visit Facebook usually as a result of like links from my email and things. So I never look at like my main news feed. Um, but as well as uh, it being too complicated, they, um, oh gosh, I had a point. I totally did. Oh, it's... um. <laughs> Instead of instead of being apologetic and sort of doing a semi lockdown with these new improved privacy controls saying, uh, you know, look, we mishandled this in the beginning and then we changed things. So how about we start with a clean slate uh, and we'll make this an opt in process and we want you to put check boxes next to everything you want to share. Nothing has changed. Everything's still out in the open and you still have to go in and figure out what everything means and how you want to share it. That's true. Uh, and and and. You know, for for the three of us, you know, maybe that that's not a, a, a huge deal to, to because because we're aware of what the changes that the changes have happened and we're aware of the controversy, and you know, we we have a, 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 a familiarity with Facebook, so we know where to go and look for this stuff. You shouldn't have to go look for it. Yeah, um, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. And now, and, and as far as the Facebook stuff goes, like I say, with their out opt out and stuff. And uh, I think I just lost my point, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, handling some technical stuff on the side here. Um, but no, yeah, I'm someone as like, well, OK, you know, I expect it to be as open as Twitter. Not a problem for me. But for the average user, like, I'm sure, like, you know, even something as technically savvy as even my wife has picked up a lot of stuff. But, you know, I don't think she has square one. that Any of this stuff has happened. If you're not in the media, nothing. You, if you're not listening to, to the, the This Week in Text and the and the, the Techzillas and, you know, whatever show or scene at or whatever, if you're not into that, you have no idea. And then this is more, how many general people do you know? My mom's on this. My my, my mother-in-law is on this, you know. All their family's getting together on this. They don't know. They don't know. I have no idea. So. Yeah, definitely. And um, I kind of feel like uh, I've had this conversation a, a bunch of times as far as, when I look at Facebook and, and Twitter and, and anything social media for that matter, um, like I see it as a business outlet. I see it as a reflection on myself. Yeah. You know, it's it's my Google results for, you know, from henceforth. So I am I, I do sculpt my experience and I do um, I'm careful about what I post online. And like there are certain things about, say, my job or individuals that I won't post on Twitter because I know that it will be out there and it'll be public. But that's I as much as I feel it should be kind of like public general knowledge it's totally not because we generally live in a in a sort of technology bubble as far as geeks are concerned like to, as far as we're concerned oh everybody's on Facebook and everybody knows how to use it but that's completely not the case when you look at the numbers and um and we're we're entering this new generation where people are suddenly very responsible for what used to be a completely anonymous experience and instead of uh, taking responsibility, uh, a lot of people are, are getting up in arms and being surprised at the fact that when they posted that they cheated on their boyfriend on Facebook, that everybody can see it. Yeah. Yep. It- Wh- whichever one of you guys mentioned the thing about um, uh, about your mother being on Facebook is probably the, the, the best measure of this. Um, and, and, and the three of us probably are not. Um, you know, they're, they're the ones the, – the, the, the people in my newsroom uh, – most have started Facebook accounts initially because uh, they wanted to, to to access information um, for for sources that people were writing about, and and, and it's been very helpful. Um, but but the folks who are older than I am, and I, I will, uh, I'm 43 years old, which seems to be about the dividing line between um, <laughs> people who accept this freely and and you know, people who are older than me, look like what what are these kids doing? I don't understand. <laughs> Um, but but I but I have I had this discussion over and over and over in this room, um, and, and those are the folks uh, that that you're concerned about. I think uh, to a large degree, uh, people who are younger than I am are a little more comfortable about about sharing some of this information. And, and, and as Rob said, uh, they are also a little more conscious um, in general uh, about 
sort of editing themselves, not not everyone certainly, but but being aware that you know okay, this is going to be available to everyone, and and maybe I should not post this picture and or not post this information or not say that I'm cheating on my boyfriend on Facebook because everyone's going to know. Um, the, the people who are older uh, look at that stuff and they and they don't they don't get it. Um, and they are very concerned. And you know, all these all these people who in my newsroom uh, who have Facebook accounts are very concerned about. I, I, you know, everyone can see this, or uh, who's going to be able to see this? Uh, and, and those are the folks that that this this stuff needs to be simplified for. Um, because, because there's no reason they, they shouldn't enjoy this experience. I mean, Facebook uh, potentially can be enjoyable and, and can be helpful. And, um, it, it's helped me reconnect with a bunch of uh, great folks that I haven't talked to for years. Uh, but, but when you have to wait through all this crap, um, to, to be comfortable with the experience, uh, it, you, you're just, you're going to turn people off. And it is, it, even if you just look at this from a business standpoint, I would think that would be the last thing that, that Zuckerberg wants to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And, um, and I mean, looking at it on a, on a business sense, uh, like you said, what they, the, the idea should be to nurture this new generation of users, people that are just getting onto Facebook, whether it be, uh, older folks or younger folks who are just, you know, uh, Facebook is one of those really cool things about the internet where you don't need to be a geek to understand it and to interact with it fully. Uh, but I feel that, um, Facebook has almost approached it in the in kind of like a typical engineer sense as far as we made it work, but we're not going to show you how to use it. You should just kind of know. <laughs> um, and like uh, like the leaps and bounds you see with usability on the iPad as far as, you know, you're seeing cats and 99 year old women use it. That's the sort of approach that creates a lifetime of, of happy customer experience where it's so easy to use that you don't need to know anything about it. And that's the way that Facebook needs to approach this. And if they actually did it right, they would slam it out of the park and they would be the social network from oh, henceforth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. On that note, I don't want to go too long with Facebook. We already broke one of our cardinal rules. Uh <laughs> <laughs> So real quick here, let me let me set this up. There is a certain clip I wanted to bring up. I was talking to everybody about beforehand. This this is too priceless for us to pass up, to be quite honest. Um, I, I, I'm sure many of you who, who uh, do follow the news and everything uh, have heard of Michael Arrington. Um, <laughs> there's a certain there's a certain and Rob video. laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> okay. Yahoo CEO uh, Carol Bartz. Uh, tells Michael uh, Arrington what sh what uh, she thinks of him. Here's here's a here's a clip right here for those of, that haven't caught it, and I don't know who hasn't by now. But here here we go, and I'm going to have to bleep this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Some classic Robert Scol yeah, Scoble laugh. It takes a long time to even convince yourself what the hell to do. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> that the fine people of Yahoo are supposed to do in this short time. So fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I think we missed the part at the beginning. We're uh <laughs> I think we missed the part at the beginning where she tells him that he runs a very small company in comparison. Can, can I just say that uh, Robert Scoble has the best laugh of all time? <laughs> <laughs> is that who that is? That's who that is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was. It was uh, confirmed on uh, at least two different podcasts that I listened to since this thing's uh, come out last week. I could recognize that laugh out of a crowd of a thousand people. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Well, on that note, uh, <laughs> that covers our news. Uh, before we get into our discussion topic for today, I want to. Uh, remind everybody of our sponsor you probably saw at the beginning of the show, post-edit, of course, uh, audible.com. We got a special deal with them uh, for listeners. We're, as with a lot of people, we're offering a free audiobook download, free 14-day trial uh, to give you a chance to check out their service. Um, and uh, you know, I've been doing this the Mayhem show. I like when other shows do it. I like to give an audible pick of the week. Uh, now, I have one prepared. I don't know if anybody has anything off the top of the head they want to share so maybe I can keep this in my back pocket. Um, but I got one. Is, is, does anybody else have one? On, uh, I don't know if anybody's doing the audio book thing here in our... Uh, um, I haven't, no. 
Uh, I am, uh, but uh, I haven't I haven't gotten into mine yet. I'll, I'm going to be doing the um, the book at, that is the precursor to the movie about Facebook and Zuckerberg. Oh, I, I've heard some good things about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I haven't gotten into it. Uh, I am all about uh, Seth Godin, though, so I think your pick is, is good to go. <laughs> well, I just finished Lynchpin uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this I, I picked up on him. He was talking about the whole lizard brain, brain concept um, mm-hmm. on an interview, and I followed it up with his TED Talk about, uh, I think, the same topic um, and creating different, and maybe it was a couple of TED Talks and, and interviews and speeches I got out of it. Fantastic book. If you ever wondered why you don't go for stuff or uh, there's there's a lot of great concepts in there about why why you shouldn't settle for what you have in your line of work. And uh, it's really got me thinking a lot of outside the box to kind of push the envelope of, you know, thinking maybe my line of work is this. Maybe it should be this uh, kind of aspect to even, you know, grow outside of where, you know, I, I find myself in my career. Um, but that's, that's my take on it. There's a lot of different things to get out of it. Uh, so if you guys want to check that out, it's at audiblepodcast.com slash Sorgatron Media. That works for all our podcasts. We're just kind of combining together, you know, uh, support the show. If you want to try that out, it's free. I got Seth Godin's actually the book I got in my free trial. Uh, that and, uh, Chris Brogan and Julian Smith's, uh, Trust Agents, which I, I gave as an audible pick on, uh, Wrestling Mayhem show a few weeks back. Um, uh, recommend all of those. Um, uh, so go check that out, audiblepodcast.com slash Sorgatron Media, and support the show. Help us out. And uh, trust me, you'll you'll enjoy it. If you're listening to podcasts, it's like the easiest thing to transfer over to. It's like, if you're lucky, it's like an eight-hour podcast, you know? Yeah, it's yeah, definitely. I, um, I, I'm lucky enough to be able to listen to whatever's on my iPod while I'm at work. And uh, it has it quickly evolved into listening to 40 hours of podcasts and audiobooks and it's just <laughs> makes the day go by faster and, and it's oh, yeah. it's it's amazing and if you're uh if you're a big fan of of seth godin uh his other book that i'm a huge fan of which is basically his blog republished in book form uh small as the new big uh 193 other riffs rants and remarkable business ideas is uh <clears throat> is, is an amazing book if I'd say if you don't know who Seth is and you want to get an introduction to the kind of guy he is and the sort of ideas he pitches, check that book out. It's, it'll, it'll blow your mind. Like it's, it's the kind of thing you just want to keep going and going and going, but it's also in uh, short segments. So if you need to stop at any time, it's very comfortable to pick back up on it. Awesome. Yeah. One of, one of my favorites that I've picked up since I picked up audio uh, books at the beginning of the year. So please check that out. Uh, so let's get right into it. The reason we have Uncle Crappy on hand um, <laughs> is to talk about where his current profession is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where my profession is. <laughs> well, of course, I'm, I'm still working, so, you know, that, that part's good. Exactly. Hey, it's working out for you, right? So, <laughs> right, right. like we mentioned, you work for a local newspaper here in the Western PA area, Pittsburgh, Greater Pittsburgh area. Um, and I, I, I've always, you know, I've always, you know, wanted to bring up the conversation because I hear a lot of the talk about the Wall Street Journal and what they're doing, you know, uh, the you know, New York Times, uh, you know, Boston, whatever, um, and, and how they've applied and how they've, they're trying to figure out what do they do with this new medium, uh, to combat what it's doing to their current medium. Uh, quite frankly, with with sales and just, you know, kind of getting by, it's, it feels like. So I, I wonder, what is the feeling around the newsroom for you where you're at? First off. Uh, the, the feeling around my newsroom is uh, it, it's it's tough, although that has more to do with how our, our paper has contracted. It, 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 like like most papers in mm-hmm. in, in mm-hmm. Uh, in the country, um, you know, we've been we've been through a couple rounds of layoffs. Although they've been, it, it's been a while since uh, we we've had any. Um, it means a lot more work for everybody. It means we have to do a lot more with. Uh, here's the wonderful cliche: do more with less. Um, what we're finally starting to see, and, and as I mentioned at the top of the show, this this comes from the owners of of the, the very small chain that I work for, um, is that. Uh, we are starting to grudgingly embrace uh, a lot of the tools that, that have been available to to all of you guys, mm-hmm. um, and and I think, particularly in the case of, of my paper, and, and Mike, I know I told you 
at, at, at the outset that um, I wasn't going to mention this, but I work for the Beaver County Times. Um, and, and, you know, they, they, what we're doing is not a secret. Oh, way to mess up my um, intro, but thanks. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, some of the things that we've, we've been able to do uh, so far are, are, are kind of uh, paying some dividends. Um, I, I think we're the paper our size is, is in is in a good position because we can offer something um, that, that that you can't find elsewhere. You can find national and international news anywhere. Um, you can't find uh, local news without without you know going to your local newspaper. Mm-hmm. You you can, but it's difficult. Um, and, and we are still the ones who are going to the school board meetings and, and covering the municipal meetings and going to, to fires and car wrecks and stuff. Um, so we, I think we, we still have the content uh, that, that, that people want to see. Um, we, we have to adjust uh, to use this. And, and it, this is a gradual process, but we have to adjust to start using some of the tools that people my age and younger uh, expect us to use, then then, then it's coming slowly. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we've discussed in the past uh, uh, kind of the the acceptance uh, of that by by uh, by your newsroom and everything. Uh, can you talk a little, like, uh, from my understand, there's, I know you're, you're big on embracing it. There's a few that others, yeah. uh, I think, uh, are people starting, you know, overall to come over to, you know, the dark side, as it were, uh, to get away, uh, get away from the dead tree industry as, as, as I'm sure you've heard it all. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're I, I still mean, killing trees I, every day. how, how yeah. is that transition every. going? Are, are people just kind of being left in the wayside in, in the kind of its wake? Um, uh, there are a couple points here. Uh, uh, number one, um, uh, and let me speak very broadly. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the industry I work in is not accustomed to and, and is actually fearful of uh, of the two way street that, that social media requires. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we have been very accustomed for years and years and years uh, to providing this information. And it goes out to you, uh, the people who are especially involved may send us letters to the editor back. Um, but that was really, uh, you know, other than cranky phone calls, that's really the only interaction uh, we get. And, and again, speaking very, very uh, broadly, we'd like it that way. Um, folks who have been in the industry for a long time are uncomfortable with the notion uh, that they're going to get instantaneous feedback, whether it's a, it's a comment on, on the, the newspaper's website, uh, whether it's someone responding on Twitter, whether it's a comment someone leaves on, on a Facebook page. Um, that is a, that, that's, that's probably the biggest adjustment uh, besides you know, actual technical stuff. Um, in, in my newsroom, uh, there, there is some of that. Uh, there has also been, uh, it's also been pretty refreshing how some people have embraced this. Um, I've obviously, I, I've been on Twitter for a long time. Uh, personally, uh, I started the newspaper's Twitter account, um, which is uh, at BC Times. I have a work account uh, at Michael D. Pound. Uh, and, and we've had a couple other people who have started Twitter accounts. Uh, one guy who... I, I thought was was pretty smart in doing this. He's like, I don't want anyone else starting a Twitter account in my name. So he opened a Twitter account that has never once used it. But, you know, I'll give him credit for at least being aware and being there. Um, our political guy uh, started up a kind of grudgingly, but has embraced it and, and uses it a lot. Not not just for newspaper stuff, but, you know, he, he's, uh, he is talking with, with other people. He's talking with politicians who are on Twitter. He's talking with other political readers. Uh, he's talking with readers, too. I, I've been really impressed with, with what he's done. Um, uh, the newspaper also has a, a, a Facebook. Um, what are they called now? They're, they're not pages. And they're not I, fans. I, I it's a Facebook thing that people like. Fan I don't know pages, what it is now. likes, dislikes. I, I don't know. <laughs> I know they, they tend to fan this to like this. So I'm, I, I'm confused now. I don't think they're fans anymore. I think the, they just like us. It's I, they, just it's my page. It's your Facebook page. You know. Okay. okay. Um, as, as, oppo- um, as opposed to a profile, I think, is what the rest of us have. <laughs> I don't so know. I, it changes I, as often as their damn privacy <laughs> yeah. uh, settings. And there's another group that says change it back to three times ago. And it's just, I can't keep up. <laughs> um, as he takes I, a swig. <laughs> I've been, I've been encouraged um, with, with the reaction in, 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 in small ways. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, and overall, because again, because of prodding of, of the people who own us, 
Um, I, I think you're going to see more stuff from my paper, and, and you're going to see more stuff across the industry. Um, the, you know, the, we gingerly try to figure out what works, what our readers want and expect us uh, to do, and then you know how we react to that, which, which is a, kind of a complicated thing, as I mentioned before. Now, a big thing as you started there, and uh, as people may have seen in the preview, the fantastic <laughs> picture from which... Uh, you, you've embraced YouTube with the media break, uh, which I, I don't see too many, you know, maybe I'm just, you know, I'm just not where I'm looking here in the area, uh, but I don't see too many newspaper places taking on video like you have. Um, I, I, that was something we've been, we've been doing that for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. maybe six years, maybe a little bit longer. Wow. Uh, someone in the, in the newsroom got an idea that we should be doing a, a, a daily webcast. Uh, initially, it was as much as a, a promotional tool as it was uh, a, 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 a news delivery vehicle. Um, although I, 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 I try to do both. Um, somewhere along, I, uh, my involvement with that is purely accidental. The woman who had been doing it is much better looking than I am. Um, she was on a long maternity leave. A couple other people were on vacation, and someone said, "Hey, Mike, can can you do this?" And I was, oh, sure. Um, I have since co-opted Newsbreak completely to my own purposes, um, and we occasionally we do newsy stuff. Occasionally, I I will do something that uh, that I try to have a little fun with. I do a, a weekend thing every Thursday, um, and and it's fun, and it gets a, a decent, a, a small but decent response. Um, and it, and it, it's a, a relatively easy thing to do. I have a, a there's a guy who um, works in our, our interactive media department who, who does video uh, spots for um, advertisers, uh, does some news related stuff. He does a weekend show with entertainment editor. Um, so I don't have to do any of the heavy lifting. I, I write it and I read it and I wear silly hats and, um, <laughs> And that's pretty much what I do. I, he, he occasionally jokingly refers to me as a talent, which is a, always strikes me as hysterical um, because there isn't a whole lot of talent involved. But we, we try to have fun with it. Excellent, excellent. Do you ever think you'd be doing video uh, when you were sitting in your journal, journal journalism classes? No, <laughs> no. In fact, um, it, at some point about two years ago, we had a, a, a couple of journalism classes, communications classes from the, the local Penn State campus come through the newsroom. And they stopped in. Uh, right as we were filming Newsbreak. And the thing that I told those kids was, I, I know, you know, when I was in school, I, I took a, a news writing and editing sequence in, in the journalism school. Um, I expected to be writing and, and that's, and that's what I do. And that's still important. But I said, do everything else, learn how to shoot, write for edit video, learn how to, how to, to record and write for and edit audio uh, to make sure you can take pictures uh, and, and, and compose them well and make sure you can edit them. Um, know how to do all this stuff because uh, when, when you guys are, are, are five or 10 years into your career, uh, the, the, the reporter who can only sit at a, at a computer and write isn't going to have a job. Um, and if you can do everything, uh, you're going to be in a much better position uh, that, than I was when I started my career uh, because that that kind of stuff and having all of those skills and being able to do everything it is going to be is going to make you a lot more attractive yeah definitely I think that's um <clears throat> that's definitely a, a more modern look I know there are a lot of kids who who I mean there are kids who go into graphic design thinking they're only get, going to be making websites for the rest of their life and they need to realize they need to round off their skills as the the pool of employment gets much bigger and bigger and that applies even more so to J school and, and kids that are learning about journalism and and they're running up against a brick wall because they didn't realize that they w had to do more than just write it and now it's you need to know how to write and interact and and like you said capture the full story and all these different kinds of media that you will present yourself with and uh, the ones that are fully capable of doing it, I mean, they're, they're folks like you who are, who are doing things like the media break and the people who are falling behind uh, aren't that talented, I guess. <laughs> I, I uh, there, it's, it's not <laughs> – there are an awful lot of smart, talented people in my business. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think more of it has to do with uh, their willingness to embrace this stuff. And, and, yeah. and, and as I said, there are still a lot of people who, who view this with skepticism or even outright fear. Uh, because it is so different from from what journalism was and what what journalism has been for their entire careers, um, 
I, the, the cool thing is, and, the, and, I, and I have the, this one example that I told you about our, our political writer and, and what he was doing, uh, what he was doing on Twitter. He he started griping to me a couple of months ago about uh, the fact that he doesn't have a place to send people when he's posting links. Um, you know, something will come up, and you know, PA politics. He will uh, he has to send them elsewhere uh, because we don't we did not have a place. And I said, you know. A blog on our website would be great, and there are, and there are other newspapers in our chain that that, that have uh, a half a dozen blogs or so. And we started talking, and we started pushing, um, and this has resulted in uh, the political guy who's just getting his started. It's um, uh, with uh, having a political blog. Uh, it's resulted in me uh, starting up a, a, a beer blog uh, again for for the Times for the Times website, which is timesonline.com, and our internal writer. Uh, has started one as well. Uh, these are all, um, and this was, I, I, I'm especially proud of this because this isn't something that I thought of. Uh, this is a, this is a guy who, you know, um, actually has a master's degree in journalism and, uh, he's about my age, but he has really embraced this. Uh, and this is the kind of stuff, um, this isn't going, going to single handedly save the industry, but this is the kind of stuff that I think can help a lot. Um, it can help JD reach a lot more readers. Uh, it brings traffic back to our website, which makes all the suits happy. Um, and, and it, you know, I can do the same thing in, in my, my limited scope there. Our entertainment editor can do the same thing there. Um, it, it's nice that, that people in my, in my business are starting to think about this stuff, um, because it's, it, it's, it's only going to help as we, uh, as we go down the line. Excellent. Um, well, one thing I wanted to bring up, we talked a little bit again about what guys like the Wall Street Journal and everything we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, now, uh, there, one of the big things is the Kindles and the iPads and, the, and, and everything. Uh, now, you say you've had some experience on the iPad. Uh, what do you think it, uh, of it as like maybe, I don't know if uh, you, you can call it a replacement pa- platform, but I guess like an alternative uh, for your delivery? I, I haven't played much. Mm-hmm. Um I, I've I've uh, I've I've had about uh, forty five minutes, and um, <laughs> what what my my impression in that very short period of time is that I, I think that something if you can tailor an application uh, to that device, um, I, I I think that's a that's a very cool thing. You, you've mentioned the Wall Street Journal, and you've mentioned the New York Times uh, at a couple points, and I think those are you know those are those are the big the giants of the industry. Um, it, it for 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 my purposes, uh, it's it's better to look at the Ann Arbor News and um, uh, the newspaper in Madison, Wisconsin, whose name I don't recall. Uh, that, that have both uh, the, the newspaper in Madison went online exclusively. They they, they cut their their print edition. Uh, Ann Arbor, I think, publishes a print edition twice a week, maybe on Thursdays and on Sundays. Um, everything else is online. Uh, and, and 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 I mentioned before, we, you know, we have to. I, I think we still have relevant content. We have to think about how, how that information is delivered. That that's that's our commodity, and that's how we deliver the stuff. Is is what needs to be changed, or what will be changed in the future. Um, I love I love the iPad again in my in my very limited experience, but I, I think that that has excellent potential uh, for for being a, a, a way to deliver this the the commodity that we have, the information uh, to our readers. Um, it's still very early in the process, and I know I know uh, Rob has a lot has had a lot more time to play with an iPad than I have. Um, uh, yeah, I, I actually have mine in my hand at the moment. Yeah, that might be. <laughs> hold, hold that up! Hold up! Hold that up! I do have you on an alternative video. I might be editing in if you want to do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a. Uh... That's Godfinger is what I've got up right now, which I'm sickly addicted to. <laughs> <laughs> and then there, I, I think that's a perfect example of the competition of newspapers on such a device. Ah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I do have, uh, let's see, I can actually pull up the New York Times editor's choice, which I think is a fantastic example of, uh, you know, old school media doing an amazing job of taking advantage of full interaction with uh with with these new sort of devices let me hold that up there so you can see there's all the stories full media all the photos are fully interactive they'll bring up the stories and you can flip through just like that um but anyway 
Yeah, I um, my my thing about the iPad, I've actually from from talking to people and uh, and showing this thing off, I've probably sold at least ten iPads in the process because <laughs> um, it's just that amazing, and it's something that uh, a lot of people talk about, but it's. You don't really get it until you have it in your hands. Um, that's, that's true. Mm-hmm. That's very true. I, oh yeah. I've I've I mean I've talked on length with people saying you know it does this and it does that. Uh, a coworker of mine was thinking about getting a Kindle for his wife, and I was like, well, maybe it would make more sense for uh, her to get this. And I talked about it for maybe two hours, and he was like, okay, you know, I'll think about it. And I brought it in the next day, and he had it in his hands for all of ten minutes before he decided he was going to buy her one. Um. But um, <clears throat> as far as old media taking advantage of things like this, uh, I think it's going to be absolutely crucial as we start to degrade the metaphor of uh, of the computer and turn it into just, just that sort of third device that sits between your mobile device uh, as far as your cell phone or your smartphone mm-hmm. and, uh, and your laptop or your computer. And it becomes just a part of your life, just sort of an intrinsic device that is with you at all times and it's how you will consume most of your content, if not all of it. Uh, I've seen a lot of news organizations uh, really do a good job, like uh, the New York Times, uh, but I've also seen a lot of news organizations sort of fumble with it. Um, like who? Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. If, they, <laughs> if, I, if I have one on here, that's actually kind of... There's a lot of smaller papers that are are trying, yeah, even USA Today is not very pretty and their usability is kind of horrible. They basically took a web page and shoved it on the device, which um, is not really going to impress it's that, anybody. It's, the, it's not the point of it. Yeah. yeah, it's not the point of it. The point of it is to take full advantage of everything this is capable of, of the interactivity, of the, the video playback, of the beautiful screen, of the multi-touch interface. That's where you're really going to see things sort of meld away and that's where you're going to mm-hmm. attract new users. Um, if you talk to some of the some of the smaller papers, um, you can you can almost hear in their plan that they're sort of panicking, um, <clears throat> like they they have footing and they have an audience. They just really have no clue how to approach this sort of uh, this new advancement in, in media, things like the iPad and all the tablets that are, are going to come after it. Uh, I even talked to um, a friend of mine writes for uh, Hearst. He's one of their, uh, he's their media manager or something, something very important. And um, and he was talking to me about, about things they wanted in an app. And he was, he's been in uh, meetings with, uh, uh, with, with the New York Times, I believe, as well as several executives from Adobe. And even they have no clue what to do with this thing. They're still kind of, everybody really wants to just sit on their hands wait until somebody uh, really, really, really does a great job and then copy bits and pieces from whatever succeeds. It's, it's kind of like everybody that says, well, I need a Twitter account. Okay, now what? You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. They get the account and they don't know what to do with it. So they develop an app and they shove their their publication on it, mm-hmm. but they don't know how to push it further. Yeah, and that's, it's like, that's where the biggest problem is. How many iPhone apps are you do, have you downloaded uh, I think all of us are iPhone users here. Uh, that that have, it's pretty much a glorified RSS tr- feed. You know, it's like I could have put yeah. a shortcut on my on my phone for this. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, and there've been plenty of times where in, instead of downloading the app, I just put a shortcut to the website mm-hmm. on my home screen because it was better. <laughs> to to be briefly defensive, um, I it, it, some sometimes this is a, for for papers of my size, uh, and 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 we are a small chain, about a half dozen newspapers, and a couple of uh, small market TV stations. Uh, sometimes this is a question of resources, uh, oh, yeah. which mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this day and age are, are a lot more scarce than were five years ago. Um, I, I I I don't know a whole lot about its development. I know my company is looking at at, at, at uh, iPhone apps. We we've, we've gotten that far at least. Um, and, and to their credit, it sounds like they're looking at doing something more than just, a, a an RSS feed. They, they want this to, something to be done well. Um, now I haven't seen what this is going to look like yet. I have no idea when it's going to be ready. Um, but, but, but the money is an issue. There, mm-hmm. there, there's no question. Um, in terms of why USA Today can't put up a good looking iPhone or iPad application, um, 
I have to think they've got all the resources in the world, uh, and, and, and if, 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 a, if a news outlet, news organization of that size cannot uh, make it work, um, geez, they're just not, they're not paying attention or they're not trying. I think with the, uh, with the larger organizations, um, you could definitely see this when, when the beginning of the, the media bust, you can call it, started to happen. Um, mm -hmm. Is a, is a question of changing a template that they've been riding on for, you know, sometimes over a hundred years, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. as, as far as, you know, just using old media. And it goes back to that question. And mm -hmm. we, we emerged into the internet and then the publishing industry fell. And then what happened with the iPad, like when, when the iPad came out, I felt that this was an amazing thing. I, I feel that the iPad, I won't say that the iPad single-handedly saved anything, but I will say that the iPad will, will stand in, in history as a representation of a device that turned publishing on its head and yeah. had everybody thinking about changing that 200-year-old uh, paradigm that they had been sitting on and it, finally it, it getting into It absolutely has that process. potential. Yeah. Well, on that note, I think that's a great wrapping point. We're running into our time for our other productions. <laughs> other productions? There are other productions that may have existed for a while. Um, but, <laughs> uh, but in that, but hey, a, a great conversation. This is everything I could have hoped for for our first episode. Uh, well, Mike, I want to thank you very much for joining us on this little experiment here. Guys, thank you both. I, uh, this was a blast, and I, I will come back anytime you want me to. Excellent. Be, be sure to check him out. Your blog is UncleCrappy.com, which I don't think we brought up much, uh, to be honest. That's uh, okay. But go this check it out. Still, go check it thing. out. Yeah. TimesOnline.com, I believe, is your <laughs> paper site, since we're allowed to talk about it now. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, of course, uh, Rob, where are you at? Where, where can people uh, find you? Where can people find me? Uh, they can find me on the Twitters, probably, uh, at R-O-B-J-D-L-C. Excellent. And I'm uh, Sorgatron. Oh, that's almost the wrong right graphic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> working on that. I actually changed my name halfway through this. Um, uh, you can find me at Sorgatron on the Twitters uh, as well. Uh, SorgatronMedia.com for all this stuff. And there's all kinds of stuff linked there. Um, so I guess with that, well, thank you. First episode of the Awesome Cast. Uh, there will be plenty more. Join us next week. We're going to be recording 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, just go to SorgatronMedia.com. We have an AwesomeCast.com that just went up, and we'll be working on that. We have at, at AwesomeCast as well. Oh, I have graphics for that too. Look at that. There we go. There's that website. Um, <laughs> Look at that. Colin. It's a new setup for a new show. I, I'm still <laughs> trying to figure out where all these buttons go. So, well, thank you very much, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.